Okay guys, so check it out. If you're having a lot of fun with the God Build series, chances are you're probably subscribed or at least familiar with some of the things that I'm doing outside of the God Build stuff. I'm doing speed paints. I intend to do a full length cartoon animation complete with voiceovers. And that's what I want to do for the rest of my life and for the rest of my career on YouTube. So I'm going to be a cartoonist at some point. It's just going to take a little bit of time to address personal issues going on in my life. But for now, what you can do is go down to the description section, check out our webpage, and then from there go to the storefront and look at all the merchandise we have available because you can buy your own Mantis Man yoga pants or Rose t-shirt, uh, Dark Adam coffee mug. You're going to be familiar with a lot of those name drops because they're either in the intro video for the God Build series or they're in their playlist of speed paints. So if you're familiar with some of those names, you're going to eventually see them in my writing, in my videos. So get them now while they're hot and cheap. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you buy something from me, thanks for that in advance. This has been Vance signing out. Peace. Ah, oh, Warframe, you never cease to amaze me. Looking back at those old days when you first started out, you just dive into the game and you'd think that you're piloting some type of super soldier tech cybernetic suit with these crazy powers and soon before you even know it you're crafting weapons and armor that takes real days to get done building and then it's off to another planet and a ship and flying with wings in space, and space, none of it really makes sense. And then you wake up one day, and you're a child. For the first time in documented history, a child gets to be inside a Catholic priest. Now I know I'm going to hell. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Warframe God Builds. And uh, I didn't give you the typical greeting because this isn't the typical build. In fact, the only person who's going to be following this type of build specifically is going to be the type of person who hasn't played Operators enough to know any different because all of us other veterans, well, uh, it's relatively straightforward and there's no need for a guide. However, there are some people who are still craving knowledge, soaking it up like a sponge, and that is why I am here. Now, if you're anyone who is anyone, you've played enough of this game, at least by now, to have completed the second dream to customize your character and therefore have a child who is effectively a telekinetic weapon. It's like the Matrix, but not. That's an accurate comparison, I think. So, you're going to be granted equipment, focus, and appearance. Appearance is all to do with aesthetics, and therefore Space Barbie related. Which, I mean, if I'm going to gloss over what makes my Space Barbie so good, it's the fact that I made this thing look like an actual trench coat, and he actually looks like a character straight off the pages of Exidium. But without, you know, praising that too much, that's not going to be a seller for this guide. No, no, no. You see, there's two options here that you're going to need primarily for this guide. It's equipment and focus. These two go together like peanut butter and jealous. So let's just dive straight into it. Now, for your attachments, you could choose really anything, and it really just boils down to personal preference. However, if you want to be great right out of the starting gate, you're going to need access to Fortuna. Go to Venus, go to Fortuna, and then you're going to hunt down a little amp modification known as Magus Lockdown. Now what this does is when it's at rank 3, it will drop a mine that tethers up to 8 enemies in 12 meters. After 4 seconds, it explodes, dealing 60% of their health as puncture damage. 
Now I need not tell you why that percentage is so good. 60 percentage is a set percentage per level, meaning that it doesn't matter whether the enemy is level 2 or level 155, this thing is going to do that set amount of damage to them, and believe it or not, I have dealt with 150 level enemies and still not been bothered because this is such a great offensive and CC tool. Now when you're defending excavators, it's important to note that you can play as Excalibur Umbra, and when you're in your operator, Excalibur Umbra will operate beside you, so make sure that you're equipping a very powerful weapon as its primary, so that it can deal with hordes of enemies while you lock them down with this enhancement. Moving on from that, I feel as though Magus Repair has become a staple for any build universal to whoever you are because it just outperforms mods like Life Strike, Healing Return, and Meta Pet Kit. As this, on Void Mode, heals Warframes within 20 meters by 20% over a cumulative amount of time. That's seconds, by the way. So you get three to four pulses and you're full health. Some of the bigger Warframes like Nidus, Sonaros, ones that have bigger health pools, they took a little bit longer, but I mean, I digress. This is something that you definitely want to have your operator lugging around because there's essentially no need for healing mods to take up mod capacity anymore. Now, in terms of what you're going to use for arcane enhancements on your amp, it's nothing special, but I have a Virtuous Strike. On critical hit, it's 20% chance for 60% critical damage for 4 seconds. This helps. I mean, it's not the best thing in the world. If I'm really gazing over these things... Virtual Shadow seems to be a little bit more useful, as in when you get a headshot, you have a 40% chance for 60% critical chance for 12 seconds. And critical hits is really where this amp shines, because I am using a custom built amp that I made out of the Certus Brace, the Schwak Prism, and the Shraxon Scaffold, and that is called the Life Fader combination. Now, I named this this, so you don't have to name that. Obviously, you can name it whatever you want, but I call it the Life Fader because, I mean, it does take a lot of time to get kills with, but it's something that's not a set number. As I've experimented with arbitrations, especially doing excavations, sometimes it struggles with level 70s, whereas it'll 2-3 to three shot level 155s. It's very confusing the way that void damage works, and I really think that it's highly dependent upon whether you're hitting critical hits, so that's why I feel as though the amp enhancement is kind of a niche thing. It's something that you've kind of got an experiment with, and you definitely shouldn't become too dependent upon. You should, in fact, just be dashing around and tethering everything down with your Magus Lockdown, and then letting your Excalibur Umbra do the damage, because that's the defining quality of Excalibur Umbra, is not only is this Warframe very powerful on its own, but it can run around and destroy things as you're playing as your operator. Now we've mentioned before how Focus is going to play a pivotal role in whether or not you're doing your part. And for the most part, especially if you're a new player, you're going to want to have Xenuric as your primary focus. And this is why. Because you're covered on health, and because your Excalibur Umbra is going to be doing the bulk of the damage, you're going to want to go with Xenuric and you're going to want to max out Energizing Dash. In fact, you're probably going to see a lot of players using this. It creates this like energy dome constructed bubble and it's barely visible and it's, it's dependent upon your energy color. But sometimes it's very hard to see. I have trouble struggling to see it. so. Uh, with this dome, you're going to be inside of it, and it's going to generate energy for you. Through the zone, you gain 5 energy over the span of 30 seconds. 
Now, it's crazy to have one of these things, things because you don't necessarily need energy generators like your Trinity or what the community is calling pizzas. Yeah, I know it's kind of retarded because they're like titanium looking. They don't look anything like pizzas. I never understood it. But I mean, I digress. Uh, void flow is also something you're going to want to max out at, a, at one point or another. It increases your operator energy by 90%. That's always great for idle on hunting. And then you increase your operator energy regeneration. Again, always good for idle on hunting. But if you've noticed here, I've got a lot of unbound passives here. And how you go about doing that is you just go into other trees like Vizarin, for instance. And then you go over to the ones that say Waybound. I don't have any Waybound because I've unlocked most of them. But for you, if you haven't unlocked this, it's going to say a Waybound passive. And then when you max it out, you can use an Eilon Shard plus a million focus. And you can unlock this for other trees to use. So I feel as though this is definitely something you're going to need to do eventually, but that comes with Eidolon hunting, and that's a very niche thing that not a lot of people enjoy, and the only reward that it grants you for the moment is just getting arcane enhancements for your Warframes, which I think is completely worth it, and I think that Eidolon hunting is fun, so I mean, I may not share that opinion with most people, but that's how you go about doing that. And you're just going to want to lock all your Waybound passives, because a lot of them are very, very helpful, and they carry over really nicely with Xeneric. But if you're using Excalibur Umbra, you're not really going to have to worry about energy too much. I would just note that if you're playing uh, a specific Warframe, such as Equinox, someone who burns through energy very, very quickly, or a Rhino Prime spec to deal with Eidolon's limbs, then you're going to need Xeneric. But for every other case where you're playing as your Excalibur Umbra, I would actually recommend Matter Islands. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it empowers your operator a little bit more by uh, going into void mode, so the next 8 attacks deal 12% additional damage for every second spent cloak. This stacks. And it's also very powerful in terms of taking on an Eidolon. On top of that, you have your Blazing Dash. The Void Dash leaves a trail of fire that deals 100 damage over 3 seconds. Void Dash will now stun enemies instead of displacing them. That's really nice for, again, excavations. Since you have Magus Lockdown, you have your CC. You don't need to displace any enemies anymore. You want to be more concerned with killing them. Then you have your Meteoric Dash. Void Dash deals 100 extra damage to enemies. Now, if you've noticed, I haven't spent a whole lot of time with any of these, and that's because I just can't afford it right now. I'm not idle on hunting too much. So, uh, if you are idle on hunting, then you can go into your focus conversion here, and then you can take these and uh, go ahead, select all of them, select all of them, and just convert it. Now we have 220,000. Uh, focus that we can pump into one of these things here and let's just go with blazing dash you're gonna pump your focus in and whammo you've gotten up to the next level now void dash leaves a trail of fire that deals 200 damage over six seconds void dash will now stun enemies instead of displacing them same stats as before except for they're increased uh, you're not displacing them you're just stunning them but uh, hopefully now with this we're gonna actually notice it doing some work so let's pump some more in uh, but we can't actually do that yet because we have to increase the pool unfortunately that's how it goes the more you uh, level your focus up the more you're going to have to increase your pool and I know I know it's quite the hassle it's kinda of bullshit in my opinion because it, it tempts you to waste a lot of this uh, and I'm gonna have to increase again, which means that, you know, I'll have to do more Eidolon hunting and more focus conversion. But that's really what it boils down to with the uh, operators to make them strong. Now, we already have amps that fire projectiles, but the question is, when is Digital Extremes gonna give operators melee weapons? 
Seriously. Now, I felt it was appropriate to uh, mention the loadout for Excalibur Umbra just because we mentioned him so much earlier in this video. And um, it really doesn't matter the type of build you use on Umbra because I've never seen him use anything more than Slash Dash, Howl, and Radial Javelin. Uh, I've never seen him use Exalted Blade at all, and interesting enough, I've never seen him reload either. So I'm assuming that Digital Extremes gives the AI for Excalibur Umbra infinite ammo and no reload. And if that's the case, then I'm going to pick Strun Wraith here, and I'm going to go with this mod setup because it's just going to absolutely melt enemies. Now you're going to want to need Hunter Munitions. Contagious Spread, Vicious Spread, Hell's Chamber, Prime Point Blank, Frigid Blast, Primed Charged Shell, and then I, on top of that, have a Riven mod, which does uh, plus heat damage, plus reload speed, and status chance. Now, this, given the fact that this is a Riven mod for uh, Strung Wraith, this ribbon specifically isn't all that great, and I, if I had the Kuva, I would re-roll this to make it be something more critical based or more damage related, because uh, Strun Wraith is an amazing weapon all by itself without a ribbon mod, and when you have a ribbon that does primarily in damage, well, the results are going to be pretty damn devastating. All this time I've been playing with my Excalibur Umbra and he's been like one-shotting, two-shotting enemies even when they're up to like level 150. So my question now is, why haven't I looked at this Riven sooner? And why have I not re-rolled it? Um, now, Strung Wraith isn't the only thing that you could use to shred enemies. I mean, being realistic here, you can use a Prisma uh, Gracada. You can actually use Opticore Vandal, but the problem with Opticore Vandal is the accuracy of AI-controlled teammates. They are not going to be that accurate, um, even with weapons that are spray and pray. And I've even tested for things like, let's say, Ignis Wraith, and for whatever the reason, AIs just don't handle shooting very well they are in constant need to keep up your ass in combat at all times and so I find them missing a lot of shots but the only gun that I've really seen them hit dead on uh, the majority of the time is definitely the Strun Wraith but I mean alternatively you could use Heck, you could use Exergis, you could use really anything that's uh, shotgun related because it's gonna perform a lot better I think um, Spray and pray weapons might work a little bit better, even maybe a Cyberus. If you if you happen to have a Cyberus Prime, and uh, you're confident that you can kill enemies up to level 155, then I would recommend that you uh, throw it on your operator's Excalibur Umbra and see how well he performs with it. Now, I'm not gonna leave my Strun Wraith alone because it's my baby. This is. This is definitely my gun and my go-to for this loadout, and everything else here is not going to play a factor except for your companion. Now, I have Worm Prime, and I really only have Worm Prime to complement my Excalibur Umbra loadout. However, all that being said, with your Prime Regen, your Calculated Redirect and your Prime Animal Instinct, your Shield Charger, your Assault Mode, Meta Ray, Negate, Coolant, uh, Enhanced Vitality, and Vacuum. Worm Prime is just the tankiest of the Sentinels. It's going to launch enemies when they get too close to you. But this isn't necessarily going to help your Spectre. So, if you're wanting to equip something that helps your Spectre more, I would actually suggest bringing out a MOA companion, and um, th what's important to note about these things is that you're going to want to build all of them regardless of whether you end up using all of them, because you can mix and match their powers. I would say that the top hat MOA is the most powerful, 
but you're going to want to get all three that way you can mix and match their powers so how I'm building this is meta ray link health meta pet kit coolant leak anti-grav grenade vacuum link armor shield charger primed animal instinct and whiplash mine now the two standout mods in this equation are going to be your whiplash mine and your anti-grav grenade your anti-grav grenade is literally going to make things float away like mary poppins and then your whiplash mine deploys a mine that tethers all enemies in 20 meters after three seconds all enemies still in range get pulled to the mine now this clusters them together kind of like a gravity grenade. It, instead of making them float away, it does the opposite. It pulls them in. It's like that opening scene of Guardians of the Galaxy. You know which one I'm talking about. Now, this definitely has my seal of approval for a lot of reasons. In enemies will go prone, which opens the door for finishers for a lot of different Warframes. But we're not going to be focused on finishers with this specific setup because this is an operator god build. Your Excalibur Umbra is the one going to be putting out the most DPS. So what you're working on is, is putting out CC and a little bit of DPS. Your, your companion here is working out more CC and then your Excalibur Umbra is going to be the high DPS. So I mean essentially you have 2 DPS and 2 CC but it's split amongst three different entities that are rolling around with you. And I mean, it's an army of three. And an undefeatable army at that. I mean, when you die as an operator, you just get transported back to your Excalibur Umbra. Which is no big deal, because you can just go right back out to your operator, and then you have to deal with a little bit of bullshit void static. But I mean, who cares? The only one you're really going to have to worry about going down here is your companion, your, your MOA. But I mean, if you build them strong enough, I'm displaying 1,079 armor along with 1,870 health. So that's pretty impressive. He's going to be able to take a beating for a little bit. And I mean, considering the fact that you're going to be using Magus Lockdown a lot, um, your MOA may not be in danger too often because Excalibur Umbra is going to slay everything, and so are you. And your companion is mainly going to be following Excalibur Umbra. As when I play Worm Prime, well, Worm Prime only hovers over Excalibur Umbra and never pays attention to me. So I would imagine, with proper field testing, I'm going to yield the same type of results with my MOA. Now, I've been playing this setup for a hot minute now, and I've got to say, it's probably my most favorite thing to play in the entire game right now. Out of all the Warframes, out of all the Arc Wings, anything at all. I mean, Operator's not very good for damage, but that's the only shortcoming of this entire setup because I love to run around as an Operator and just watch Excalibur melt everything in my path. And it especially starts becoming really fun when you throw out a bunch of Spectres and you raise an entire army of people following you from objective to objective. Crazy, crazy type of content. It's just... I don't know man, like it's just its own type of addicting, I can't really explain it. I realize that not a lot of people are going to have fun with it like I do, but for those of you who do, I hope that you've learned something, you like this video, and if you did, comment, share, subscribe, do everything I always encourage you to do, and until next time, this has been Vansaru, signing out. Peace.